everybody welcome to my channel um, I'm actually working on a little painting tonight uh, it's called brain geyser by Mark Teton and uh, just a little fan art I figured I would do some painting and you guys can watch my process and uh, maybe I'll talk about how I got into Magic the Gathering so yeah I'm just gonna get started all right I did a little painting earlier, and uh, got a little bit more to go. Not too much though. I'll probably finish this up tonight, tomorrow. <clears throat> so yeah, is everybody excited for the new time spiral? I know people have really mixed feelings. It's either people are super excited or they're not so excited. Some people are kind of like, uh. This is just another like master set type deal, another bunch of reprints. But I am actually super excited for the uh, newer cards and the old borders. That new sad robot is freaking awesome. I love to see it in foil. And especially people that are into like the old um, style border foils are gonna be really excited, I think. But hopefully they've addressed the uh, the foiling so that's the one difference between the old ones and the new ones still have some old like 7th edition foils that are beautiful no foiling so yeah oh yeah and plus in the um when time spiral first came out i know the, like the little subset a lot of those cards were more rare than like the rare card slot so i think people are definitely gonna be chasing after those it's definitely gonna affect the value inside i think but yeah so um i guess i'm gonna be talking about how i got into magic the gathering so in 1994 i was just a wee little thing little tiny Little tiny baby Sarah. Not really a baby, I was probably, I want to say like four or five, probably four. And um, my parents, one of their friends came over with the game and was like, you guys have to try this. And so, let me make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. So he brought over all these cards and was like, you guys have to try this. So, um, they all played. My parents were always into like weird, like occult stuff. Not like they're, you know, just interested in it. Old books, old art, stuff like that, you know, like a hobby. And um, so it was really exciting. It's like, whoa, what is this? We've never seen anything like this. So they started getting together and playing. My parents started to collect. And I remember I would like sneak out of my bedroom in the middle of the night when I probably wasn't supposed to be and like peek over the kitchen table like what are you guys doing? What are you playing? And I was just so intrigued. Like that's all I could think about. So my dad, he got me like the tiniest box, you know those little box, the storage boxes, the white ones, whatever you want to call them. And I drew all over that. I think I had like a stream of life, fog, grizzly bear. I really liked green. And I think I really liked green because I remember he made me like a super janky, easy to play deck. And uh, he taught me how to play. And I didn't even know how to read when I started playing. That's how young I was. I don't know if there's anyone out there who was younger than me. If you are, you can go ahead and tell me. But, um, yeah, I think he had, like, really easy, like, Land of War Elves, and, uh, I don't even think we used the abilities. He would just do, like, basic, like, combat, like, 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and I would compare the numbers, like, this one's bigger than that, so he wins! Which is awesome. You know, um... I kind of did the same for my kids when they were young, just to get them the hang of the game, and you know, I couldn't read or anything, so I was a little bit at a disadvantage. 
but um, as the years went on, I saved all my birthday money, all my allowance money, and I would go to like the local hobby shops, or the, actually it wasn't a hobby shop, it was a comic book shop. Later on, I would go to the hobby shop, but for, originally I'd go to the comic book shop, and <clears throat> I don't think I ever got like a whole booster box until I was probably in my teens or an adult even. But um, I collected all through the years, and I always just played with family. We always played at the kitchen table, and um, I don't know. I think that's what made it so special for me too. Is like if it was like family, you know, Friday night magic was at home, at the kitchen table. Maybe we'd get a pizza or whatever. And we'd all play together, and our decks were total jank. Like. I think that's one of the things that stuck with us with like the old school magic is we didn't have all this net decking and it was like what do you have and what are you gonna make and every Friday we'd have something new you know we'd we'd play together and be like oh how am I gonna how am I gonna beat my mom's deck she totally whooped my butt last Friday you know and I think that is what really made it fun it's just coming up with all this stuff and you put a lot more effort and energy and love into what you were doing. And now, I mean, you know, magic is still great. I still love magic, but I think that's, um, later on I got more into like EDH and Commander because of the creativity aspect of it. Like I never, I never really care about standard. I know some people, they love Friday Night Magic at their, their local shops because you get to meet new people and and it's a whole experience, but, um, so yeah, when I got to be a teenager, um, I started a family really young, so I never really went out to do the Friday Night Magic thing, I guess. Never really met a lot of, like, other young people or people my age that played. A few here and there, but, um, mostly just did the family thing. So I took a little bit of a break from playing and then in 2011, um, I think the first like MTG Commander product came out I was like, oh my god, what is this? What is all this crazy stuff? Like, you know, back then YouTube was pretty much new and um, you know, I wasn't getting all the latest updates on everything and checking online and doing the spoilers. And, um, so yeah, I saw, I saw this product online just by chance. Probably got like a weird advertisement for it somewhere. And I was like, this is awesome. You know, I have to check this out. So I ordered, I think I got all five decks for like a hundred bucks at Christmas time. And I was like, I got so excited about all these new cards. I'd never seen anything like it before. Like crazy power, crazy abilities, just the concept of the commander. I was like, what is this? So I started to like look online and read more about it. And then I really went all in on EDH. Um, not all in, I, I wouldn't say all in because I never got to like competitive levels. Still like, I don't know, I was just always about trying to see what I could do on my own with what I have. Um, later on I branched out a little bit more and did some more research, got a little bit better, tried to get my family in on it, and um, yeah. And then after that, with the internet and the interwebs, then I started getting more into like Checking out all the newest sets and I have a pretty, I mean, to me, I have a really large collection, but <laughs> I see what other people have. I'm like, oh my gosh. Some people buy like, you know, cases and open them every set. <laughs> Not me. I think I uh, skip, I usually skip like the master sets and um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever done, like, talking and painting at the same time like this. It's more challenging than I expected. 
You're like thinking of two things at once here. But one of my favorite things about magic is like hearing people's stories about how they got into it and what makes it special for them. So actually, um, the art really inspired me to get into art. So um, I would just sit in my room and draw pictures, try to see if I could, you know, get as close to the magic art as I could. And I think I just did so much practicing. I got better and better. And then when I went to high school, I applied for, um, like a, it's like a magnet school type thing, I guess. And I got accepted and it was for like all different arts. You could do like writing or dancing or theater. And I did visual art. So when I was in high school, I got to spend a lot of my time painting. We did other stuff too, like photography, um, sculpting, printmaking, a lot of different things, which was awesome. I got to dabble in a lot of different stuff, but painting is definitely my favorite my medium of choice I think and um, so yeah I don't think I would be an artist today if it weren't for the game which is pretty cool it's always interesting to me how the game like affects people's lives really And I don't think I'll ever stop playing. <laughs> I don't. It's still one of those things that I still get excited about. You know, I always look forward to seeing all the new cards and I know people always have negative things to say and I do too sometimes, you know. Not everyone is a, a winner, but um, actually in 2020, I didn't spend a lot of time buying new cards. And I was away from my family for most of the year um, because of this COVID stuff and actually I probably shouldn't even say that word <laughs> but um, um, so yeah I didn't have anyone to play with and that's a total bummer like who wants to spend money on new cards when you're you know all bummed out and I actually started to get into um, toy collecting because that's something I can do on my own. And actually I might, in other videos, share some of my collections. Because <clears throat> that's something I really love now. It's, it kind of ties in with magic, you know, the collecting aspect of it. Um, so yeah. Toy collecting is a super fun hobby. You can find like, actually where I'm at right now, I'm in the Northeast everything I mean some things are starting to open up but there's no like big flea markets there's no toy shows there's no comic cons any type of like event every, there's nothing so hopefully in the near future there'll be more stuff like that because I would really like to do more of that and um yeah I post a lot of the um the fan art that I make on Instagram. I'm not a huge fan of social media. I don't, I check it a little bit here and there. I don't really post too much or as much as I could. It's just not my favorite thing. But, um, I have some other ones there. Actually, I've done like Royal Assassin, Atog, different Moxin. Earthbind, the Subin Doppelganger. I think that one was in my last painting. I mean, not my last painting, my last video. And I have a lot of different ones if you want to check them out. Just for fun. Just for a hobby. And, um, I have a lot of respect for old, old school magic, well, all magic artists, but the old school art is really what inspires me and I have a lot of respect for the artists um, 
Yeah. I think without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. For sure. So yeah, if you are interested in, I think in the future, maybe I'll, um, I'll show my collection. Maybe I'll show some of my decks. Um, maybe some of my toy collection. I have, a, um, I'm buying new stuff all, all the time online, just since there's no flea markets and stuff like that. So I did save um, some, a few packages that I got. And uh, I might open those on here so you guys can see what I'm buying. If anyone's into that. <clears throat> but yeah, I think I will. I'll probably be painting this for a while on the slow painter. <laughs> it's actually harder to talk and paint at the same time than I thought. But yeah, I will share the finished product of this on my Instagram and I will link that in the description. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. I'll keep going with this. But uh, I don't want to sit here in Babylon all night. Maybe I could do a, a, maybe a time lapse in the future so you could actually see more of the whole thing. The whole process. But yeah. Thanks so much for coming by, you guys. And uh, hopefully you'll be back next time.